Hello Enchanted Ones, and welcome back. Today, join me as I share with you my crystal collection, what I have learnt on the way about them, and how they link to our different chakras, and techniques on how you might want to use them. So, I hope you enjoy. Sit back, relax, and keep on watching. Crystals are incredible. What amazes me most about them is that they are the earth and they have been made over thousands and thousands of years of built up pressure and depending on different conditions and elements, different colours and geometric formations are made. Crystals have been used in energy healing for thousands of years and I couldn't help but be mesmerized by them. Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome to my crystal collection video. <laughs> I don't know why I haven't done a video like this before because as you can see I have quite a lot of crystals. They are a little bit of an obsession of mine but I also see them as an art form and a form of healing and that is why I have so many. It's just a collection of mine that keeps growing. So I'm not trying to brag in this video, I'm just purely so interested in crystals and their amazing healing properties. So my interest started about eight years ago when I first kind of became interested in like spirituality and like witchcraft and things like that. I just got fascinated by them, their different qualities and why and it amazed me that crystals are used not only for healing but also in electronics and I was thinking hang on a minute there's definitely something in it then there's definitely some sort of connection that we have with crystals and why they help so much. I then went on to do a crystal healing course on the internet which was a lot of fun and then learnt about all the different properties and why so I'll be sharing a lot of the different knowledge that I learned with you guys today but also telling you a few techniques as to how I use them and yeah what works best for me but also just sharing with you what I've got and my finds along the way I've got a local crystal shop that's what I go to to get all these crystals so I know that they're all ethically sourced and that's very important to me when I'm buying crystals that she'll know where they came from yeah i think that is one of the best thing because then their energy is even purer because they came from a pure happy place one of my favorite challenges to do in a crystal shop and every time i walk into the crystal shop is i don't know what crystal i'm going to go to i just always am drawn into what resonates with me most so that's how i've grown such a broad collection of crystals and every single time I'm drawn to a particular crystal when I learn about its properties it's always the crystal for me and what I'm dealing with at the time so yeah it's a really amazing thing crystals. I have organized my crystals today in order of colour, order of the chakras and that makes me very happy. It's very pleasing to the eye, very pleasing to look at. They go from like a very low vibrational energy down here to then a higher vibrational energy so they work their way through the body and then here which I'm going to start with here are my clear quartz and my clear crystals and they can be replaced for any crystal so if you don't have a particular crystal you can find a clear quartz or a selenite or something like that and you can replace them with that because they are just a pure frequency and I love working with these clear crystals and I love having them in each room so anyway let's get into it and let's begin here <laughs> So I'll start with my clear quartz. I have quite large ones. I really love the way how they shine and how they can tell a story inside. So this one will go into my lounge. This one will go on the windowsill in my kitchen just to, again, purify the air and make it a happier place. This one, so a smaller 
point. This will go in the bathroom. I love all the little points of that. This one here, another natural one, will go on my altar, smaller one there. I've also got a geode. I love these. I could crack this one open actually myself and it's such a cool experience seeing the little crystals inside, seeing how they form naturally inside this thing. Like, that's amazing, the pressure and to see it for what it is. One of my other things I love to do is on holiday, I love searching in rockeries for natural crystals. So I found this massive stone and it's got some little clear quartz crystals inside. I found this on the Jurassic Coast in England, which is full of amazing hidden gems, literally. So I keep this one in my bathroom along with this clear quartz and I feel like it brings a sort of like seaside, energy to the bathroom which i kind of want in there to be honest so then i have my selenites i like selenite a lot selenite is like a form of salt it's made from salty water that has a lot of calcium in it the water evaporates and then it forms these amazing crystals so they are quite moldable but also they are quite fragile so always be careful with selenite crystals i have this pointed one that i keep at my altar so the energy is pushed out from the top so it's great to point in certain areas. I've also got this selenite. This is my first one. This you can kind of see how this one formed and I do love that one whereas this one was sculpted and you can see the difference with that. And I have these selenite wands and these are great conductors and movers of energy. So if you find that you have a particular chakra that is blocked you can guide the energy up and out of your body oh my gosh that felt really good <laughs> so yeah these are great especially when I'm doing crystal healing I use these so often or I put them in the corners when I'm calling the corners just to surround myself with a white light I've also got this selenite bowl if you didn't see my letha video I left some offerings in it I find it's great to kind of magnify whatever you put inside magnify the energy of that item oh and within it I've got a little sweet little something here I think one day in a crystal shop I was just drawn to a shape of a moon maybe I needed sleep at the time it's some sort of clear quartz geode I'm not too sure what that one is and the last thing is a selenite slab and it's really heavy I I use this at my altar a lot. I put other crystals on this to actually charge them. So I love this. I normally put crystals that are pointed on it just to make it look cool. But yeah, great magnifiers of energy, these ones, and all of these ones are. So that is the clear quartz. If you meditate on clear quartz, you have a great sense of purity in your mind and it's great to de-scramble thoughts and leave you with a sense of purity and space. So next I'm going to be telling you about the very low vibrational crystals and kind of working my way up over here. So let us go over here. So these very low vibrational crystals are so good for releasing negative energy but also they're great to healing and grounding us and our root chakra which is located right at the bottom of our spine. We're going to start with the black ones here. So this is tourmaline, very good for releasing negativity uh, and I just love its texture. I think it's just such a beautiful crystal and we also have obsidian which is one of the favourite of mine. It's kind of got this kind of glassy texture. You'll also notice I'm very drawn to points. Very low vibrational crystals work really well with very high vibrational crystals, so like clear quartz. This one will get rid of the negative energy. And if I hold a clear quartz, it will then draw in 
positive energy. So then what I'm creating is a lovely flow and balance within myself. So that's a really great way that you can bring balance into your body with these two crystals. Obsidian is made in volcanoes and the pressure in the volcano builds up and obsidian is made. So it's very glassy, very soothing to the touch. Next we have probably my most used crystal which is hematite. I feel so grounded when I hold hematite. It's so weighted and cold along with the feeling and the sensation of it. It's also a great stone to help with if you've got anxiety and you need to get out of your headspace and back into your grounding chakras. So I have these two crystal bracelets here and what I do is I put them on my wrists like this and then I feel the weight of them and whenever I need a moment where I need to come back into my body if I'm getting too woo -woo in here which happens a lot uh, I feel the weight of them and it feels heavenly. I also have a palm stone of hematite too. Palm stones are great for meditation that's really nice some little ones here just handheld little ones i have some fool's gold oh and i have an obsidian bracelet here too which also comes in handy also a lot of different pendants that you'll see on the way this one that i actually did make from clay this inside it is natural obsidian mixed with turquoise I also have some red jasper. This is great for grounding. I also have somewhere in the house some red carnelian, but it is hiding from me. I don't know where that one is, but I find if I can't find a crystal, I don't need it at that time. It kind of is hiding from me until I'll need it again. So I like that mindful way of thinking. And then we kind of move into the more orangey browny crystals. And these are some of my favorites too. I love a tiger's eye. These tiger's eyes I use on a regular basis. I use multiple tiger's eye. And what I do is hold them in my hands like this and I shake. And what that does is gets me back into my mind for one thing, but also so the movement plus the combination of their frequency really helps put me back on track. And I also have some smaller ones there. I'd normally take those ones out and I kind of hold them in my hand so they're quite discreet for when I need to like shake them. Also, tiger's eye, got another one here, another point, a rough tiger's eye there. It is so beautiful in the light, I can't even tell you. And I have some Labradorite. Now, words can't express how much I love Labradorite. It sends me into another realm, and that's literally what it's supposed to do. <laughs> that's literally what it does. I put this one next to my piano because they're really great for grounding, it's really great for creativity, balance, and self-expression. This one, I mean, when I came to the crystal shop that day, I was not expecting to be drawn towards this particular massive crystal because it was quite expensive, but, <laughs> but it was worth it because I can just be completely stunned with it all day. And it's also great for tapping into that higher plane if you like to do like divination or spirit work. I've also got a little necklace here that is labradorite too and these crystals also tap into the sacral chakra so they will kind of overlap with the next chakra too and that's the one that we're just about to move on to So these crystals are used to help the sacral chakra, which is all about our inner waters, our inner creativity, our emotions, our hormones, and it's all about controlling that inner tide of ours, and it's all about controlling our balance, and I use these crystals to death. 
<laughs> I use them quite a lot. So I mainly use them in the form of rings though. So I have these two citrine rings down here and I'll place them on my fingers because that is the part of me that is mainly using creativity. As you know, I play piano and I do art and I just do camera work and gardening. So what better way than to put rings on your fingers that emit this creativity. Also, I do have ones that I could place upon my sacral chakra, like these citrine crystals here. These ones were naturally amethyst that would change to citrine. I'm interested to know what your thoughts are on crystals that have been changed, like genetically modified. I particularly, I don't mind. I think that if it was amethyst in the first place, amethyst vibrates on the crown chakra, which is also really good for creativity. And now it's turned orange, so even better. I have another little citrine point here for my altar. What else do I have? What's that called? I have some sunstone, really great for motivation, that one is. And I have this massive palm stone here. This one overlaps with the sacral chakra and the solar plexus chakra. So I love holding this one in my hand or I also like placing it on my belly. It's really good for motivation, just getting you to do things <laughs> and calmness. And I keep this one next to my bed because I like to put it on my belly in the morning sometimes or even at night time just to kind of set the tone right get the balance right. It's really useful. I've also got another yellow calcite there too. Calcite's really good because it's really affordable and it's quite common too. And you could probably even find it on a beach somewhere, especially if you are in the south of England. There's so many calcites you can find on the beach. I kind of only have two crystals for the solar plexus chakra, which is these two. So moving on to the next chakra, which is the heart chakra. I have so many crystals for this one, which are these green crystals and also pink crystals too. So you'll find that there are an array of different colors that you can choose that vibrate on that frequency. So whatever kind of draws itself out to you more. I am more drawn towards the green crystals, which you probably know. I mean, come on. <laughs> I. I have this jade crystal which I put under my pillow regularly. I put under my pillow regularly because it helps me with my sleep and my nightmares, which I kind of have in like waves. So if I'm in a phase of getting nightmares, I put that under my pillow and miraculously they are gone. I have some green fluorite, green adventurine, green amethyst, green calcite. These crystals are all so great for balance, luck, health, and love, of course, self-love, self-love crystals. So I have a mixture of tumbled ones to help me in my hand, a mixture of points to place around the home to ignite their energy into the atmosphere. I do love a raw crystal so much because they remind me of where they came from and I can Feel the, I can feel the energy even more from those crystals. I don't know, that's just me. I also have malachite. This crystal is really great to work with if you're trying to unveil things that are in your subconscious. It's one of those crystals not to use like lightheartedly. So you'll find that, yeah, they'll draw out things and you'll be able to heal yourself and work through those things from using malachite. So a great stone to work with there. Down here I have a bloodstone and I also have a couple of unknown crystals here actually. This one I love, I got it at the fairy festival last year and it's a little mini acorn. I thought that just 
summed me up. I also have this massive jade. A lot of people thought this was an olive. Uh, it does look like a massive olive, if I'm honest. But even the lady in the shop didn't even know what it was for. It was shaped like that for some particular reason, but she didn't know why. So I use it to just hold my stick pen in, but I also used it in my fairy video as a fairy finder 3000, as you'll know. Finding hack stones or stones of holes in them, I find is great because you can see through them into portals into the unknown. So that's why I used it as a fairy finder. I also have a very special stone that I got on holiday in Lanzarote called Olivina and we went on a tour of the caves there. It's one of the only places in the world where this stone is made. It's very good to help with anger and can really help balance out the heart chakra and the solar plexus chakra so they can become one and you can find your inner peace much like a lot of these green crystals here too. Moving on to the rose quartz crystals, one of my favourite crystals to use for self-love and care. I have it in a lot of different forms so I've got this point one to put into my bathroom or sometimes I put it at my dressing table and it's just those areas in my home where I want to promote such an atmosphere of self-love and adoration for myself. I keep them in the places where I need to be very mindful of that. I also have a little bracelet of that but also I have a few necklaces and I find that they're really great to work with because I've got one on now you'll find that the length of the chain can be as long to take that crystal to your heart chakra. Oh, I forgot to say. Oh, um, so I also have, of course, my engagement ring <laughs> and it is an emerald. If you want to enhance self-love with your jewellery, you could put a particular ring on this fourth finger here, and I didn't know this until recently, there is a vein that connects this finger to the heart. You don't need to be engaged to put a ring on this finger, okay? <laughs> so, I also have my Himalayan salt. This is a very big promoter of self-love, and I put this on my dressing table again. My rose quartz roller, which I use mainly to take out all of like the tension and stress away in my jaw and in my forehead but also it brightens and tightens and depuffs and it's really great for your skin and i also have a i'm not too sure if i'm pronouncing this right but it's a gua sha and what this does is, again, it tightens and lifts your face and can really help. Also, if you have some sort of migraine, the coolness of it is just very, very lovely. Down here, what's that? Oh, a tumbled stone. But I also have another necklace. This means so much to me. It came from Stonehenge, the gift shop, not the actual Stonehenge. <laughs> and yeah, I wear this around my neck very often too. It just reminds me and takes me back to the ancient druids. And then we move on to the next chakra and the next vibration, which is the throat chakra over here. So the throat chakra is all about self-expression and being who we are and empowering that. It's a very, very important chakra, much like the other ones to be fair, but it is a chakra that is very easily blocked and it can kind of block the head space to the rest of the body. So this, this area here gets blocked and if you find tension there, then yeah, you might need a crystal to help unblock it. For that is blue calcite and I have this little square here which I literally just place on my throat chakra here. I also use fluorite. Fluorite is a great crystal to balance the mind and the body together. The fluorites down here you'll see that they are green and purple and if you think about those colors and what I've told you today of all these different colors purple is the crown chakra and green is the heart chakra so balance 
balance of the energies and really helping combine them into one. Fluorite is just beautiful. I mean, I've got so many different fluorites and it comes in so many different colors. So depending on your mood, you might be drawn to a particular type. This is a fluorite that I actually broke in half. These are the two bits of it here. I was looking for it and at the time, I think I was very tired i kind of i was overworking myself and i really needed to sleep so i was drawn to this darker fluorite yeah and my inner wisdom was telling me that i needed some some sleep some rest basically and i find that fluorite helps with descrambling those thoughts that just get really confusing and far away from the truth so i've got those i've also got a fluorite palm stone that also broke my Lights just break for some reason, but it's okay. I feel like they break for a reason sometimes to tell us something. Oh, I have also some fluorite bands here. Again, what I can do with these ones is put them on my wrists like that and feel the balance, feel the energies. I've got fluorite shaped hearts down there. I've got so many fluorites. I definitely needed a lot of balance in my life <laughs> when I found these fluorites. Oh, and I've got this one when, um, I don't know when that was, but that's more of a blue one there too, maybe for the throat chakra. But yeah, you can see they come around in lots of different types. I have blue obsidian here. This is great for the throat chakra because it has all the power of the black obsidian, which is like grounding, removing negative energy, but it vibrates on a blue frequency, so you can pop it onto your throat chakra. And then we move on to the third eye chakra. Now, I really only have one crystal I use for this, only one really, and it is lapis lazuli or lapis lazuli this crystal and our third eye chakra is in charge of our intuition our higher self and it really helps with decision making and our logic processing skills so i find that placing lapis lazuli on this will really help me to feel that area and connect with it and awaken the psychic gland that is within and the psychic gland can also really help with divination, accessing our higher self, our higher wisdom, and also spirits. So if you're doing some spirit work, that might help also. So yeah, this is a really good one for that. Also, solidite, I've got a lot of that, but I don't actually work with it that much. I've got this bracelet here. Again, lots of fluorite on it for balance. And oh, I've got this little mushroom. And Michelle gave me this in a little package. So thank you so much gifting me that it is the cutest little mushroom ever I then want to move on to the crown chakra and I mean this one is a good one because it's got my favorite stone and my birthstone which is amethyst so yes amethyst is probably the stone that I own the most of and the biggest stone that I own. This was one of my first stones that I bought and I just fancied treating myself. <laughs> it's quite expensive, but it's worth it. And I keep this one next to my bed. The crown chakra is really good for healing our astral selves, our subconscious mind. So things that we feel we have no control over, but we kind of actually do, and we can take control back over it. So crystals are a great way to start with that and help calm it and achieve balance. So yeah, I have a lot of different ones. I've got this big one, this smaller one here. Oh, this beautiful necklace. I absolutely adore wearing this necklace on a very special occasion. I also made this little amethyst necklace down here. Got the really tiny one there. And also this beautiful tree i was given this tree by my friend laura and oh my goodness it's just the best gift ever and also oh liz she gave me this little fluorite tree with amethyst on the end and you know what one day i plan to have a crystal tree forest in my home there's no stopping it so if you don't know what to get me for a present 
a crystal tree will fit the job. Um, I also have an amethyst crystal water bottle and these are great. You can get them with lots of different other crystals in it and whatever crystal you pop in it, whatever crystal maybe you need, it will charge the water to that frequency. So when you drink that water, you will become that frequency. So that is something that is very useful in my life now. Right, so I feel like I've spoken way too much, <laughs> but those are my crystals. But I also want to share with you a couple of other things as to how I keep my crystals and what I keep my crystals in. The first thing is this beautiful container here. And you might think that this is specifically for crystals, but no, it's actually a thimble holder thimbles and I found it in a vintage shop and it was like four pounds I think but look at it it's just just perfect so perfect for crystals this I mean I could have crystals on it and I'm actually really loving the idea of crystals on this here but this is actually a fruit stand but I you know what I'm feeling I'm gonna change my fruit stand to now become a crystal stand. I feel like that's a very good idea. Also behind me, I have my crystal cabinet here, which I keep all my crystals in. The only thing I will say about it though, is that it annoys me that there's glass on it. I kind of almost feel like I don't want the glass to be there. So the energy of the crystals will be magnified in the air. So I often find myself when I'm working at my altar space, I'll be opening the door so the crystals the energy will flow out. I also have my triangles here. These I put at my altar and every time there's a different Sabbath or if I'm in a different mood, I place different crystals to resonate with me on there. I also love it so much because the video that I made it in went viral and it's the reason why I am here today like this because of that video. And I also have a couple of pouches. This pouch, gifted by my lovely friend Laura. Gosh, Laura, you get me the best gifts, honestly. Like, you got me quite a few of these little bracelets and crystals too. Thank you so much for your gifts. <laughs> so I keep this one next to my bed and I keep each crystal for each chakra in it. So what I'll do, I keep my red jasper in it there for grounding. I keep my big, my big boy <laughs> in it. And this kind of covers my solar plexus and my sacral chakra there. I keep my jade in it for self-love and again, the nightmare situation. My lapis lazuli in it for my third eye chakra. And I keep, where is it? This little amethyst guy in there too for my nightmares, along with my massive one that I have next to my bed. So this will be going upstairs on my bedside table shortly. And the last place I put my crystals in my home is in this box that's underneath here, and I'll get that one out now. So this box here, and I kind of made it over actually to be quite more aesthetically pleasing. It was quite a pale wood, so I wood burnt it on the front here, but also, yeah, just made it look pretty. And in it is six different compartments, and I like to be mindful with the colors and where I put them, so I'll kind of gravitate towards a particular color as to what crystals I need. So what we'll do is we'll arrange these in here nice and neatly as to how I normally place them so I can show you that. <laughs> so yes, now I can see them all, visualize which crystal I want to grab as to what I'm feeling and then go from there really. So I think that is it. Is that it? Is that everything? Uh, 
think so. Oh, I forgot to say, I love putting crystals on books. These books over here, which I made actually, so they kind of enhance the properties of them. I do not know how long it's gonna take to film the B-roll of this video. <laughs> quite some time but it's all worth it honestly this is my life this is my true love collecting crystals you know when you love collecting crystals when the ladies in the crystal shop know who you are and they're really lovely they're really sweet ladies really i've told you lots of different things that i know about crystals today but in the comments if you know about crystals if there's any tips that you like to put forth please let me know let us all know these tips if you care to share them let me know what your favorite crystal is if you have one or what your favorite birth crystal is my favorite crystal is the one that i'm holding at any given point uh so it changes on a daily basis so enchanted ones thank you so much for watching this video all my love alwyn my throat hurts <laughs> I feel like I'm in a crystal shop and I'm trying to sell them all to you. Um. <laughs>